Hi everyone and welcome to today's tutorial. Today we're going to be doing a sci-fi gunshot. Okay, so there's quite a lot of stuff that goes into this and my main tip for anyone that's doing visual effects is layering. Um, basically, no sort of stock footage or anything that you're going to get by default that you just drop onto the footage will look really good. So for example, if I just use the shockwave effect from this, like that doesn't look good at all. That's It's literally just a shockwave. And the trick is that I've added all these different things like uh, the HUD and the lens flare and particles and the displacement and everything and when it all comes together it makes an effect that's greater than the sum of its parts if that makes sense so to break down this effect it's basically the footage of my friend Cameron raising his gun and then uh, I've got this sort of sci-fi HUD element that pops up here the way I did this is uh, I got a load of circular elements like this off of Google images and what I did is I cut them up into individual elements so I've got like all this different stuff I animated them all individually to sort of come up out of this mask and then spin around and you know, do a little bit of scaling and rotating. Uh, the lines here are revealed with some masks just so it looks like they kind of charge up. And then what I did is I added a little glow effects. It's literally just a fast blur. Uh, I added a few adjustment layers and added a fast blur to each one, slowly increasing it, um, the blurriness. So the first one's two, then it's five, then it's 10, then 20, and then 40. And then on top of that, I put a color um, balance. I made it like a blue color and it gives it this really, really nice glow look. And then what I did from there is I took that composition and added it on top of this. I set the blending mode to add motion track this part of the gun here and literally just parented it on and now it moves with the gun as you can see. The next element is an optical flare. Uh, I used Video Copilot's optical flares plugin. If you don't have this plugin, what I'd recommend you do is go on Google Images, type in lens flare. Find one that looks kind of like the sort of style you want, so there's obviously loads here. This one looks quite like the one that I used in the film, so I'm going to use this one. Save it to your desktop or something. Let's import the lens flare from my desktop. And if we bring this into the composition, uh, let's scale it up a little bit. And I'm going to set the blending mode to add. And you also want to draw like a mask around it so that it's obviously you don't want to have the, the weird edges. So let's draw a mask around it, feather it. So that looks kind of good. And that looks pretty similar to what I had in the first place. I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to pre-compose them so it's a bit brighter. Call it lens flare. Uh, set the blending mode back to add and position it back over Cameron. And then what you can do to do that sort of charging up effect, I'm just going to flip it around as well. What you can do is add an exposure uh, effect to it and sort of turn this up and down to have it charging up. So this is the Google image one and then this is the one I made with the plugin. Really not that much difference. So as well as the flare, what else have we got? The next thing is probably the shockwave. As you can see, it kind of comes out as the flare sort of gets to its brightest point. The shockwave begins and then it kind of goes... Poof. So as the flare gets to its brightest point, the shockwave comes out and sort of disperses like that. And there's some particles and stuff there as well. The shockwave is from Video Copilot as well. It's from a pack called Shockwaves and it's really, really good. I recommend you get it if you're sort of into motion graphics or visual effects. If you don't have it, click this link on the screen now or the link in the description and it will take you to a video I'm going to do about how to make that from scratch without having to um, pay for the pack from Video Copilot, basically. So once the shockwave goes off, there's some particles and there's sort of a bulge effect, if you can see it going on here. So as it goes off, you can see everything behind the, the shockwave gets a bit warped, kind of makes the air around the, the gun when it goes off sort of shift, which looks really, really cool and adds a bit more of an impact to the gunshot. The way I did that is I added a adjustment layer and I just added a turbulent displacement effect to it. I keyframed the amount to go from 80 to uh, zero over the course of sort of 10 frames or so. And that just makes it go from sort of very powerful to evenly dispersing and disappearing after the, the shockwave kind of finishes. Uh, the size is set to 51 and uh, the complexity is one. That's probably all the settings you need. Just play with it until it looks right to you. But that's literally all that is. And then on that adjustment layer, I just drew a circular mask that expands outwards over the course of the 10 or so frames. And by the time it gets to the end, the uh, amount of the um, displacement's gone to zero. So by the time it gets to here, it's not really doing anything. And But here it's sort of really intense. And then the last thing on top of that to sort of sell the effect afterwards is they've added some particles of different colors that just sort of fly outwards and then swirl around. I followed Ren the Reaper's Ember tutorial to make this um, just to kind of get them to look realistic. I've used Red Giant's Particular to do this, uh, which is sort of the, the particle system that I use, but there's a particle system in After Effects called Particle World, I think. Yeah, so there's Particle Playground, Particle Systems, or Particle World. Um, basically, all you want to do for this is, if I go on one of them, there's nothing really complex about what's going on here at all. It's literally just some particles I added to sort of shoot out, which from the center of the particle emitter. Um, I added a bit of motion blur and added a glow effect to them. And when that all comes together, I just duplicated it and sort of added two different colors to add a bit of variety in there. And you can see they just sort of burst outwards from the center and sort of float around for a bit and hang around after the effect's gone off. So this is what I was saying about layering. All these things just come together and I've spaced them all apart slightly so they don't all start at the same time or finish at the same time. So the hard element comes up here. We've got a bit of a face glow going on behind him. So as you can see, if I turn this on and off, 
Uh, I just drew some masks around Cameron, uh, duplicated the footage, drew a mask on it and set the blending mode to add and just sort of roughly rotoed um, around the areas that I think would be lit up by the, the, the HUD element and the lens flare. The lens flare starts to charge up and then uh, the shockwave comes in and the displacement effect comes in and then as that clears we've got the particles that sort of go swirling around so none of these elements on their own really make a sci-fi gunshot this isn't just an effect that i've dropped on it's just a load of stuff that i've sort of custom made or downloaded off the internet and layered together to make something that looks like a gunshot it's all down to personal preference but if you're looking to recreate this sort of effect then this is how it's done hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial if you want to see how the shockwave is made again then i was showing how to make it from scratch in the other video that i've linked in the description thanks for watching and i'll see you very soon